The Rizagora project developed a governance framework for responsible research and innovation. And one of the key assumptions we had from early on was that already today numerous governance instruments and responsible practices of research and innovation exist. So instead of reinventing the wheel, we said we should learn from this rich landscape of governance arrangements that are already out there. We started an extensive empirical program during which we conducted over 40 different case studies. And in addition to that, we monitored the RI developments in 16 different European countries. But most importantly, we involved a large number of stakeholders in this process. During the so-called co-construction phase of the Zagora, we tested, refined and further developed, together with these stakeholders, the governance framework for RRI. In the following video, we want to share the different perspectives of some of the stakeholders who contributed to the project. They will explain the potentials they see with regard to RI, but also some of the pitfalls and challenges associated to the concept when trying to implement it. So to my mind, uh, responsible research and innovation is about a new conversation about uh, research and innovation that takes on board a set of questions that have been ignored up till now. And they're questions to do with uh, not just the, uh, the uh, uncertainties and opportunities of innovation, but also the directions of innovation, its purposes. Where is it going? Where is it taking us? It's very much about how to take the opportunities of innovation um, in such a way that society genuinely benefits and its um, innovation is not you know, at the expense of some um, uh, to the benefit of others. Well, I hope that RRI could bring forward solutions that don't only uh, have economic benefits but also benefits for society or the environment. There are no easy, easy answers to complex questions, but I, I see RRI as a way of addressing the complexities and it's the way forward. I think there's tremendous potential because it is a framework which can embrace many actors in the innovation system. Universities, public authorities, civil society groups, and there's a really important need to have a framework where these different actors can come together and think about how they can collaborate and work with each other. A major potential lies for me in the point that um, it creates awareness, it creates a reflection of uh, people in charge and responsible. It's not business as usual, it's not research as usual, there is something new uh, that is needed and um, yeah, awareness is a big, big challenge. I think it's going to be valuable for society um, when uh, people become more conscious of what, um, what they are doing. It's mostly, a, for me, it's mostly a culture change. And here is a way to uh, communicate and disseminate a cultural attitude to research and innovation um, that takes responsibility seriously. It provides a forum to discuss values, judgments, priorities for both research and innovation. There should be a proper legal environment, but also education. Yeah. So I think that education is one of the keys for responsible research and innovation. So people have simply to feel it. I think one of the, the very big challenges when it comes to RRI is resistance from the expert communities, the research communities, because they want to speak truth to the power or to the public and say, we know, we are the experts, leave it to us and we will solve it for you. We need to uh, change our idea about what counts as excellent science. You know, excellent science needs to also include some sense of, uh, of, of publicly important science, of relevant science. But the way that we talk about scientific excellence, it tends to be the opposite of that. Right? This is science for science's sake, defined in its own terms. Now it is not only science and the industry taking the lead in the process of research and innovation, but also civil society. So I think it is a very important role for, for let's say, for civil society uh, to be involved in this 
to make sure that the right questions are being asked and not the wrong questions. Uh, social scientists should still keep the role of, of critical observers uh, of the process to keep an eye on how the things are being done. It is necessary to uh, give uh, to get together uh, people from various branches, various sectors, and uh, basically they are t uh, speaking another languages and uh, have another goals and another uh, mission. So it's really difficult. I think the barriers are: is can we find a common dialogue, a common language where we can discuss it meaningfully? I think we have a lot of different parties involved that have intransigent, uh, very strict positions uh, and we need to come together in some sort of a forum where we can have uh, a good conversation, a good dialogue that, uh, that lets us understand other people's uh, perspectives. The input of these very different stakeholders was vital in the development of our governance framework. So thanks again to the over 100 experts representatives of civil society, industry, and the policymakers who contributed to Resagora. Now, in order to make such a governance framework relevant for research and innovation, it is important to incorporate these very different experiences, perspectives, and interests in a constructive way. Now, the guiding principles we developed in the project are intended to support structures, conditions, and mechanisms uh, which provides spaces and, uh, to balance out and negotiate these very different interests and, and perspectives related to responsible research and innovation. So in essence, we hope to support actors who are interested in governing their research and innovation activities towards responsible research and innovation.